I was the homesick kid at Intermediate who never wanted to leave home. I never saw myself leaving the Waikato um, or the farm. It's been a journey probably full of luck, <laughs> to be fair. I've been so fortunate with the people that have I've been lucky enough to surround myself with or be introduced with and the coaches that I've had. I've been lucky, I've been lucky. Um, and it's been, it's been great and even when you think it's over, it's not. <laughs> Uh, growing up for me, we lived in Te Pahu, which is a, a rural settlement at the base of Mount Porongia and my parents still live there today actually. They um, have a dairy farm there so it was uh, all hands on deck. Right from a really young age we were feeding calves, getting cows and calves in. My sister and I always had to figure out how to get the buckets from the cow shed to the um, calf pen and into the cafeteria without spilling much milk, which uh, required a bit of teamwork and strength. It probably gave me um, my creative slash problem solving skills growing up on the farm. But I went to Te Pahu Primary, which was just down the road. It was really tiny back in the day, really tiny. If you kind of had put your name up for um, netball, you needed to be in the soccer team or we had to join forces with other schools to get numbers. Um, I do always remember cross country was my um, probably favourite um, event in the school calendar, uh, closely followed by calf club. Um, and I remember growing up, um, I always wanted to be a calf club judge after I left the <laughs> uh, That never actually came true. I went to Barclay Normal Middle School for my uh, Form 2 year and although I thought it was the most horrific move from my parents um, making me live with my nan, <laughs> um, uh, it was really good for me I think. I remember being blown away by the number of sports you could do. Uh, I remember being uh, like a weed as a third former and um, Miss P told me that she had this grand plan for me that I was going to be in the under 21 side um, for New Zealand and we were, I was going to go to the World Youth and I remember at the time going, this lady's crazy. Fourth form in the Open A it was called back then. Fifth form we are at Upper North Island and yeah, New Zealand Secondary Schools. That was probably the first experience I got um, meeting other people that played netball throughout New Zealand and made some really awesome friends. I remember saying in the car to mom, like, this is going to be a really good experience for me, like, doesn't even matter if it like, doesn't work out, it's going to be great. And it was a two day trial, Saturday, come back Sunday, and it was tough, man, it was tough. I remember it just it being so fast. And actually, one real memory I have is I remember when Irene and Liana walked in the doors. Um, and Case and I were sitting down and we were like, whoa, like, they're amazing. So yeah, we, we made it through Casey and I in 2003 into the Magic side. And that's when it was National Bank Cup. Congratulations on a hard fought match tonight. To the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic, the winners of the 2005 National Bank Cup. And yeah, Noel's pretty much moulded and groomed us uh, right through till 2013, I think. Yeah, we get to World Youth, um, it's going pretty great. And we come to our Australian game, so we meet them in the semi final, as everyone predicted. And we were playing along and then all of a sudden um, the power goes out. Um, and it was actually, the timing was outrageous because it was right on half time. So we kind of got an, an extended half time and classic Kiwis, we're hoeing into the power rates and the lobbies to the point that our manager is like, that is enough. Um, so we had to sit and wait for the power to come back on and you could not have asked for more favorable conditions to come in our, our way because we were pretty much able to um, rest long enough that uh, our second half for once didn't fall off the back end and we're actually quite, uh, um, forced to be reckoned with. And we beat them by one, I think. And like, no one, no one saw it coming. We didn't even see it coming. And we were just on this massive buzz. Um, and for us, the final was just another game and we were coming up against England. And we had played the months or twice, but um, yeah. And then the final was just the final. And it was, 
It was the most amazing uh, experience, I think, because we had been absolutely doused by them, the Australians in particular, every outing we'd come up against them. And to stand on the podium and just see them that little level down <laughs> from you um, is a memory that really stands out. At the end of Under 21s, um, I made the ferns, with, uh, the squad, I think. At that stage, um, largely, uh, I was just there to make up numbers. New Zealand, Van Dyke, Chahuna, Wilson, Temapara, George Big New Zealand were carrying the most fantastic middies I think New Zealand have, has ever seen. We had a Dean, um, Temapara, Anna Robery, Leslie Rumble, Vicky Wood, and myself. So we were carrying heaps of middies. Um, so I was just happy to be there. And then it was North Shore Event Centre. I remember it so vividly, and I was just admiring what the girls are doing on court um, and just really trying to nail my quarter warm ups, really. When Ruth looked down and she was like, Warm up. And I was like, Oh, who do you want to warm up? Who do you want me to tell to warm up? And she was like, You. And I remember being like, Oh my gosh, this is a big mistake. I don't think. I was like, Are you sure? Like me. Um, and I got 15 minutes against Tamsin Greenway. I'm pretty sure she just passed and cut all over me. Um, and that was that was it, pretty much. 15 minutes, and um, I was, yeah, I was pretty certain I wanted to be in the black dress for quite a long time. Kiwi magic in Melbourne. We had a stellar season in 2012. That was really quite remarkable. Knowles was at the Hound Bow South, we didn't have an assistant coach. I think that was probably the season that taught me that it actually doesn't, just because a campaign goes smooth sailing doesn't mean you actually will get the outcome that you desire. Uh, it also taught me that the teams that win are the most deserving teams that win. Um, and yeah, just pretty much that a bit of turbulence is not a bad thing. The moment to save up for the magic. I think I, I emotionally left Waikato when Knowles did um, and I went up the road to the Mystics. I stayed at Mystics for a couple of years and then um, I actually was going to finish up and that would have been 2015. Um, not that I felt like I had achieved everything I wanted to, it was more I just wanted to do something different. Um, and I had got a job at Deloitte um, and I was really enjoying actually getting my feet under the desk. I absolutely loved my year at the Swifts. Um, I really embraced the intensity of um, the trainings that they did in their um, centralised programme. I loved how they looked at the game. Um, it really did uh, light my fire. I think I had a couple of conversations with Knowles. I, didn't, she, I had um, caught up with her after the Swiss played steel and um, she had asked me what I was doing. And again, I was kind of at a crossroads and I was like, oh, I, at that stage I was lo would love to have gone back to Swifts but didn't know what they were doing. Um, and she goes, oh, look, look I'm, um, there's something could be coming up in the Aussie League for myself. And I was like, well, if you need any middies, you've got a number. <laughs> We had absolutely no expectations in, in that first year of Suncorp. I don't even think anyone had anyone had us on their radar and far out we would just take it game by game. Um, and next minute we found ourselves um, in the final. Um, and everyone had been saying, imagine being a start-up club, literally we didn't even know if we had bibs the first day, um, being premiers and yeah, holy moly. And the Sunshine Coast Lightning have achieved the unachievable, crowned the inaugural Suncorp Super Netball Champions. You've given up so much to play in this league. You've given up the opportunity to play for the Silver Ferns. Tell us a little bit about what that moment was like then when the final whistle went. Um, yes, yeah, it's a really special moment for the club and for our team, I think. Uh, it's been an incredible journey. I have no regrets, I've loved every challenge, every moment, and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. At the end of 2017, um, yeah, in my head I was like, it was time. 
Um, there obviously was the, um, the heartbreak with the New Zealand stuff for myself. And I dramatically or emotionally felt like, what was the point in playing if you couldn't represent your country? Noel's ran, she goes, um, okay, where you're at? And I was like, I've only been playing club and I've been doing CrossFit and I don't know how fit I, like, fit or not fit I am. And my diet <laughs> has not been good. Um, and she goes, oh well, do you, you, can, you can just come in and have a rumble. Um, and I think my first Tabata session back, oh, I felt like I'd blown a hoo-hoo valve. And I was like, what am I doing? I probably played my best netball in 2017. And yeah, I just knew I had to be realistic in terms I couldn't have go from fairyland to um, elite netball and expect to be able to do what I did in 2017. So it was slow progress, but that's what the journey from September to July was all about. Uh, we've been better than we were the day before and just squeezing as much as we could out at um, every training or um, every campaign that we established. In the end, we did the unthinkable, I think. What a story! What a story! Can you believe it? It's all over! New Zealand have won the World Cup! New Zealand netball stand tall! I remember getting that last pass, I think, from Poli, um, and potentially have lost it, Liz gaining it off me and heard the whistle for the penalty to go. Then I see Maria running at me and in my head I'm going, get back, get back. We need to play the penalty. And I was not moving because I was not going to get called for stepping. And then the full time went and oh my gosh, it was like you just wanted to fall to your knees. You're back on the top of the world. For some of these players, they've been labelled the fossils. Look at Maria Falau. Casey Cortua, Laura Langman, Katrina Rora in particular. And for me, uh, it was just it was just extra special because I just so wanted to do it for Knowles um, to really put a stake in the ground and just save the nation, save the world. She's the super coach, she's the ultimate coach and she needs to be here for a long time. And then the second part of me, I just wanted to do it for Maria and Case. We had been around for a very long time. Um, and Case in and out with injuries, um, and like Maria um, having gone and played netball over in Australia. And to send Maria and Casey off as world champions, I think is justifiable. It's been a brilliant journey. I didn't even think I was coming back, in all honesty. I never thought I'd come back. But that's the story, I think. When you think one door shuts, another one opens. And even you've got to go back sometimes to make sure it's shut, because sometimes you've left it open. <laughs>